Shalom Chavrin. I'm Stephen Ben Dunoon, and you're watching Dunoon Institute of Biblical Research, a production of IsraelReturns.com. I'm standing here atop Mount Tabor, a very famous mountain in Israel here in northern Israel. It is, oh, I guess you would say it is uh, pretty much in the center of the state in the northern part. We have uh, to the west, we have uh, Haifa, and to the east, we have Tiberias. In fact, in behind me there, you're seeing the Jezreel Valley, the valley that the Bible speaks about Armageddon, Armageddon, the great battle that will be fought, the last battle that will be fought here in Israel where the world's armies will come together and fight Israel. But I'm here today on Mount Tabor for another reason, for the New Testament where it accounts the fact that Yeshua, Jesus of Nazareth, came atop this mountain apart with Peter, James, and John. And here he was transfigured before them, and they saw Moses and Elijah speaking with him, discussing the things that would happen to him in Jerusalem. If you look at the Matthew's Hebrew Gospel, it gives a very interesting statement. Matthew writes in Hebrew that they were asleep but not asleep. They were awake, but not awake. It was like they were in a vision, very much the way a vision, you would describe a vision, a person that's asleep, but not asleep, and awake, but not awake. And the Bible clearly says when the vision left them, Yeshua commanded them that they tell no man the vision until after his death, after he'd been risen again. But anyway, it, it brings to mind the two witnesses when I stand here in this place. In fact, we're not exactly on the top of the mountain because on the top of the mountain, the Catholic Church did exactly what Peter tried to say when he was here originally. He says, let us build three tabernacles, one for you, speaking to the Lord, Yeshua, and one for Moses and one for Elijah. Matthew in the Hebrew Gospel said, he said this because he didn't know what he was saying but it was something that Yeshua never intended to happen here. But nonetheless, the Catholic Church has totally ignored the words of God, and they claim Peter to be the first pope, so they even ignore Peter's words, and they went ahead and built their little tabernacles up here anyway. In fact, on one tabernacle there, there is a, uh, or Catholic Church, I should say, monastery, whatever you want to call it, a sign outside talking about when Pope John Paul II came here. And the people claimed that he was transfigured right here on the mountain himself. Such blasphemous words that we continue to hear. But nonetheless, Moses and Elijah did appear to Yeshua here, to Jesus of Nazareth. The two witnesses, in fact, the two witnesses that we believe that will come to this land in a not so distant future. It also seems that when Moses and Elijah appeared to Yeshua, it was prefiguring, because here he was, he was the light of the world, he was the representation of the, of the lampstand that we see in the book of Revelation, also in Zechariah where it speaks about the two olive trees on either side of the golden lampstand. Yeshua is the very oil, he is the very spirit, he is the one that gives the life to the seven churches or the spirits that have, uh, maybe, uh, how would you put that? It would be um, the, the, the different believers that, that have been represented down through the ages that we see in Revelation. Even today, we see those same seven spirits that were in the churches of Asia Minor are existing here today, as we uh, sh shared with you in a message a little while back. But here Moses and Elijah appear on either side of him, and he was the very source. He was the oil that gave life to the golden lampstand. And so as we're here today, I think of even the unfulfilled prophecies of Moses in the book of Exodus, such as when Moses makes the comment in Exodus 15, I will sing unto the Lord. And he goes on to say that he has gotten victory over the haughty one, over the horse, over his horse and over his rider. Now Moses never got that victory and he wasn't talking about the Pharaoh of Rome or Pharaoh of Egypt at that time because Pharaoh and his men lay dead and this was after the Red Sea crossing. This was after the waters came back together and, the, and there 
Pharaoh and his men, all their bodies lined the shorelines. And Moses puts the song in the future saying, he will, get, he will get victory over the horse and over his rider. It's fascinating to me. And not only that though, even when another unfulfilled prophecy is when he asks God the question, they will ask me, Mashimo, what is his name? We do not have a single biblical record where Moses was ever asked the name of God. Now God does reveal it to Moses and Moses reveals it to the people later. At the very event at the, at the burning bush, he does not reveal his name there. He says to Moses, tell them, has sent you. I will be that which I am has sent you. So the children of Israel did not ask Moses at that time, Mashamo, what is his name? In fact, there was not a need to at that time. But we are living in a day today where there is a time. This is an hour because Israel claims that they do not know the name of Hashem. They do not know God's divine name, the yod He vav He. And seeing as Moses said that they would ask him this, no doubt the time will come they will ask Moses, Mashamo, in a land where Hebrew is spoken, in a land today in Israel, the very country you see in the background, that would love to know the very divine name of God. In fact, it will be the very true sign that they are one of the witnesses. And Moses knows that name. Even after this particular transfiguration experience, as they were coming down off of the mountain, they asked Yeshua, doesn't the scripture say that Elias must first come? And Yeshua, even in Matthew's Hebrew gospel, declares, Elias shall, Elijah, Eliyahu, he says, Eliyahu shall first come and he will save all the world, according to Matthew's Hebrew gospel. He will save all the world. The final salvation of Israel because you, Yeshua's blood has already been shed for all the world, the all the world, all mankind. And the Gentile people have believed upon him and they've accepted him to be their savior. But if he is to save all the world, then the only way Elijah could save all the world is to point them to Yeshua. And that's exactly what he will do. He will repoint the Jews to Yeshua and Israel, once Israel has recognized Yeshua to be the Messiah, then we will see that all the world will be saved. There are other prophecies as well that Moses made. Even for example, when God gave him the sign, he gave him the sign turning his staff into a serpent, his hand to leprosy, it was healed, the serpent goes back. But then God makes a very odd statement to Moses. He says to them, if they do not believe the voice of the first sign, then they shall believe the voice of the latter sign. I always thought that was kind of interesting for God to say that. For God to say, if they don't believe the voice of the first sign, and Moses was the voice of God to the people of that day. He says, if they don't believe the voice of the first sign, and clearly the biblical account declares the children of Israel did not believe Moses. In fact, that's why none of the original children, except for Caleb and Joshua, did not go into the promised land. Even Aaron, Moses' own brother, was not permitted to go in because he withstood Moses at the first time at the, at, uh, when God had him smote, smote the rock the first time at Meribah. He withstood Moses. In fact, God said he would not allow Aaron to go into the promised land because of that very reason. Miriam also died. Everyone except Joshua, the son of Nun, Joshua ben Nun, and as well, Caleb. They were the only two that made it in, kind of like a type of the two witnesses. So many interesting accounts that we could look at as far as types. I know there are those that believe that it is Enoch, but clearly, if God says to Moses, if they do not believe the voice of the, of the first sign, they shall believe the voice of the latter sign. And Moses will be that voice in the latter time. 
and there will be a time when Israel will believe his voice. I'm Stephen Ben-Danun, atop Mount Tabor in Israel.